Hi and welcome to Bits from my personal collection, the show where I dig into the time, the developers, and the technology behind some of the items in my collection. Today we'll be taking a look at the original IBM PC. An Orion Software, one of the very first commercial publishers of games for Big Blue's new system. A system that ultimately would come to define the future of the personal computer. In a time before the term PC would be recognizable with the home microcomputer, companies like Apple, Atari, and Commodore amongst others, would all put in a fight for their system to be the computer of choice in people's home. In 1981 while Prince Charles and Diana's marriage would kickstart the glamorous 80s, and a new pay-per-view channel would redefine how we all would experience music, IBM launched its first successful personal desktop computer, the IBM Model 5150, also known as the IBM PC. While IBM had been producing advanced computer systems for decades, systems that typically would cost hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars and require multiple technicians to run and operate, it was becoming increasingly clear that a big part of the future of computing was in the micro and personal computer market, with computers operated by non-technicians. Even though IBM, at the time, was one of the largest companies in the world and was producing some of the most advanced computer systems around, they certainly couldn't ignore the fact that the home microcomputer market in the last year of the 70s hit sales around $150 million, a figure predicted only to exponentially increase over the course of the next few years. In 1975, IBM had released its Model 5100 computer, an extremely powerful and capable self-contained device. But while the Model 5100 can be considered one of the very first mass-produced personal computers, it was targeted at scientific users and professional businesses, and with prices ranging from around $45,000 and upwards in today's money, it was just not for the average home computer user. It would take another six years before IBM finally had a product that could be considered a true personal microcomputer. In that time frame, numerous other manufacturers had, with more or less success, released their own take on an affordable personal computer. In February of 1978, IBM began working on its first real microcomputer, the System 23 Datamaster, but like with the earlier Model 5100, this was again targeted at businesses. The Datamaster was not finished and ready for the public until the summer of 1981, and along with its huge price tag, it was quickly overshadowed by what IBM would introduce at a press conference at the Waldorf Astoria Ballroom in New York City, just a month later. Mighty IBM was now considerably late to the personal computer party when they finally unveiled the IBM Model 5150 in August of 1981. This wasn't the first time IBM was being late. In 1952, a year after the first commercial computer in the US, the Remington Rand Univac was launched, IBM released its first computer, the IBM 701 Electronic Data Processing Machine, and within five years, IBM had gobbled up 85% of the market. The deep pockets and massive market forces of IBM were indeed something to be reckoned with. In 1980, Former Apollo mission system programmer, Philip Donald Estridge, along with 12 fellow engineers, began working on Project Chess at the IBM Entry Systems Division in Boca Raton, Florida. Estridge and Bill Lowe, who was the lab director, managed to convince IBM CEO Frank T. Carey to supply them a dozen engineers, a small budget, and a year, to develop a low-cost true personal microcomputer, codenamed Acorn. Estridge decided early on that to be successful and to meet the deadlines, the team had to stick to using already tested vendor technology, building the computer with off-the-shelves parts and components in a standardized one-model product and outside sales channels for quick consumer market saturation. The team opted for an open architecture and wanted to make the design specification publicly available to give third-party software and hardware developers an advantage that essential would make the computer and ecosystem a lot more attractive to the consumer. This was a marked departure from previous IBM strategies, which centered on in-house development of proprietary and complex computer systems. IBM turned to Computerland, Sears, and IBM product centers to make the IBM PC available to the broadest set of customers. When negotiations with Gary Kildall's Digital Research and IBM to include the CPM operating system fell through, Bill Gates of Microsoft, who IBM earlier had requested a basic interpreter from, acted swiftly and purchased a right to 86 DOS from Seattle Computer Products for $50,000. 
86 DOS or QDOS as it was known was quickly reworked to fit IBM's needs and rebranded as PC DOS. Gates predicted that IBM's open architecture would spawn numerous other manufacturers copying IBM's design, and most if not all would be in need of an operating system, made a non-exclusive deal with IBM, giving Microsoft the opportunity to license its operating system to IBM's upcoming rivals, and with that MS-DOS was born. The IBM PC, when released in August of 1981, quickly became IBM's most profitable computer. Pricing started at $1,565 for a configuration with 16K of RAM, color graphics adapter, but without any disk drives. The computer featured the fairly economical Intel 8088 microprocessor, running at 4.77 MHz. Even though the base price was in line with the Apple II, to be really useful the IBM PC had to be upgraded, costing at least double that. That's equivalent to around $9,000 in today's money. Regardless of that, the open architecture and great modular approach of the IBM PC made it a popular choice both with businesses and the average consumers as their computer of choice. Even though the term PC really covers all personal computers no matter the architecture, IBM's clever and $36 million expensive Charlie Chaplin marketing campaign really solidified the term PC as a name every body would recognize with an IBM personal computer or later on a compatible running Microsoft DOS. As with IBM in the 50s, it wouldn't take long before it dominated the market. An IBM PC was sold every minute, and by 1984, IBM had $4 billion in annual PC revenue, more than twice that of Apple. Over 50% of all American companies that used a microcomputer was using an IBM PC. IBM's open architecture, non-exclusive rights to the operating systems and ultimately a failure to really realize the importance of the PC eventually had fatal consequences. In the coming years, hundreds of manufacturers would produce IBM compatibles that not only would be cheaper, but also faster. The Clone War was in full effect. The original IBM PC wasn't exactly targeted at games, but like with most other computer systems before, games ended up being a significant driving force for the system. IBM had chosen Microsoft Adventure as a launch title for the IBM PC, this was the only game in the initial software release for the computer. In the coming months and years, IBM would publish titles developed in-house and by third-party developers to push the computer's ecosystem. The first of these were all released in typical corporate IBM fashion, in dull gray and quite uninspiring packaging. Later on, IBM would turn to plastic cases with a lot more focus on the cover appeal. Besides the software titles published by either IBM or Microsoft, not many commercial titles were available during the first year of the computer. One of the very first publisher to commercially release games for the new platform was Orion Software, out of Auburn, Alabama. Orion Software was founded in 1980 by Kevin Aziz, while he still was in college. His company would focus on entertainment software for the Apple II and IBM personal computers. In its four-year lifespan, Orion Software would only release a handful of titles. In 1984 the company was acquired by California-based Paperback Software. Paperback Software was founded by Adam Osborne, the creator of the first successful portable computer. Osborne operated with the concept of bringing software to bookstores at a discounted price, he wanted buyers to be able to buy software at a lower price, just like with paperback books. Orion's first IBM PC game, Paratrooper, released in 1982, was based upon online systems title, Sabotage, which was developed by Mark Allen and released for the Apple II in 1981. Like with many of the early personal computer games, Sabotage was inspired by the fast-paced action coin-up games of the era. Paratrooper was released as a PC booter, meaning it didn't need an operating system to run and was, like with most of the early IBM PC games, in four-color CGA and with PC speaker sound and music. The objective of the game is to shoot all incoming paratroopers with your gun turret at the bottom of the screen. If a number of paratroops reach the ground or your turret is hit by bombs the game is over. While Paratrooper was a clone, the title would go on to spawn many clones itself, and most of these would be referred to as Paratrooper-like games. Paratrooper is often referred to as one of the more important titles in the x86 gaming evolution. The game was later released in the Master Blaster IBM compilation series from Keypunch. Paratrooper was developed by math genius Greg Cooperberg when he was just 15 years old. 
Cooperberg's second title PC Man, a non-licensed and non-discreet clone of Namco's 1980 hit Pac-Man, was also released in 1982. It looks like copyright infringements weren't a big thing in the early 80s, it seems everybody would copy anything, look good and make money while doing it. Cooperberg removed the first A in Pac-Man, and it became PC Man, a great and striking title, no resemblance to Namco's Pac-Man now, besides the artwork taking up the whole front of the cover which looks 100% like the original, just rotated 90 degrees. Copyright infringement or not, at least the IBM PC owners had a chance to play a replica of the great coin-up game. PC Man was marketed in magazine ads as a rival to a popular arcade game, that was apparently the best way to say it was a slightly altered copy of Pac-Man. Nonetheless, PC Man played way better than any official PC port of the coin-up, with fast keyboard response and even faster gameplay. The objective, to eat all the dots all while avoiding the four ghosts. As you would progress from level to level, the game quickly became extremely challenging, almost impossible. The playfield was rotated 90 degrees from Pac-Man, this was actually not to make the game differ from the original, but because the arcade cabinet had a vertical screen which didn't fit the horizontal monitor layout of the personal computer. Cooperberg's third and last game, before going away to Harvard University, was Jay Bird, released in 1983. Jay Bird was a Q-Bert clone, and quite a good one. Cooperberg was great at making the most of the limited hardware available at the time. Jay Bird was one of the first if not the first isometric game for the IBM PC. Like with the PC Man name, the Jay Bird name was extremely close to the name of the original game it copied. All of Cooperberg's three titles were written in assembly language and ran silky smooth on the 4.77 MHz Intel 8088 CPU. All games were published by Orion Software and sold either in computer stores or as mail order. Cooperberg's titles were still being sold when he received his bachelor's degree in 1987. The IBM PC surpassed the Apple II in late 1983 as the best-selling personal computer, with more than 750,000 units sold by the end of the year by the more than 700 separate resellers in the US and Canada. In 1983 IBM announces its widely anticipated IBM PC Jr., which was also conceived under Estridge's leadership. IBM's attempt to enter the home computing market with a dedicated home computer fails to capture the fancy of consumers, primarily due to its lack of compatibility with IBM PC software, its higher price point, and its unfortunate chiclet keyboard design. IBM terminates the product after just 18 months of disappointing sales. In 1984 IBM debuts its second generation of PCs with its AT line of computers, designed around the Intel 82866 MHz processor. IBM stunned the industry, only a few could deliver this advanced technology, but no one at a price point that could match IBM. This time around IBM tried to trademark the AT, which largely failed. Thus, most 286-based PCs were modeled after it and marketed as PC-AT compatibles. By 1985 IBM was the world's most profitable company, and its sales of personal computers were exceeding other markets it had otherwise dominated for decades. IBM's personal computer group had grown to 10,000 employees and was grossing about $4.5 billion a year. On the 2nd of August 1985, the father of the IBM PC, Donald Estridge, his wife, and several other IBM employees, dies in the crash of Delta Airlines Flight 191 at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. Estridge was only 48 years old, but his legacy lives on in basically every personal computer released ever since his original IBM PC saw the very first light of day. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Twitter or visit my blog at retro365.blog, where I post new articles every month.